there are several viruses that incorporate um, this genre of viral hemorrhagic fever. So you have uh, dengue fever, uh, West Nile, uh, Lassa fever. There are several other different arena viruses um, that are related to Lassa fever. There are also viral hemorrhagic fevers, um, Ebola, Marburg. And basically the main uh, sign of a viral hemorrhagic fever is exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, a viral infection that causes fever and then hemorrhage. Originally, we see these viruses as um, sort of focal outbreaks that happen, and when they do happen, it causes a lot of media scare, um, and a team goes out and they quarantine the village or the people, um, and then it resolves itself, and the population sort of dies down, and the media hype dies down about it. But what we're saying is we don't actually have to wait for an outbreak to happen because these diseases are more widespread than they are than we thought they were. And so we have the opportunity to actually go out and find them instead of having to wait for them to happen before we can study them. So seroprevalence is uh, what we look at to see um, if a population has been exposed to a virus. So when a person becomes sick, they produce antibodies. And these antibodies uh, stay in the body for years, 10 years, 20 years, um, for sometimes for a lifetime. And we can then go back to these patients um, and we can actually detect these antibodies in their body to see if they've ever been exposed or infected with these viruses before. So when we go in and do a seroprevalence study, we're trying to assess what percentage of the population has been exposed to this virus and survived. And the other thing that we're looking at with the virus is that they're actually a lot older than we think they are. And, uh, our main point of evidence on that is looking at uh, this signal that's been under selection in the Yoruba population in Africa. During my travels, I shot a lot of different things. I, I think uh, this image specifically came out of the fact of uh, I really wanted to get the idea across about how hard it is to travel in Africa, especially in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where uh, you have very little navigable roads um, throughout Congo and really the only way to travel is by river or to charter a flight. And so I feel like this, this specific picture really sort of gets to that idea that you have this you know, far expanse of forest and this ri river was sort of winding through, um, through the scenery. Just I slowly sort of inched away at the photo and as I continued to work on it, all of a sudden it started looking more and more realistic and I was like whoa I think I can actually maybe portray this like really cool idea and what I really wanted to get across was when you look at the image you say is that real or is that fake? For me a lot of times my creativity comes from sort of getting a snapshot in my head and I think it's sort of the photographer in me is I sort of frame uh, a thought or an image and as I was working on the paper, um, you know, the main concepts of the paper are that viral hemorrhagic fevers are a lot older than what we think they are and that they're going undiagnosed. And so um, as I was thinking about that concept, this idea sort of came to me. And the idea was if I was flying over the Democratic Republic of Congo and I looked down and I saw this river that was in the shape of Ebola virus, like how creepy that would be, it's sort of like the end of a movie, you know. And um, it, I felt like it really got this idea to this idea that the virus is basically as old as the forest itself. And it took me flying over it to see it, so it gets that this idea that it's uh, going unnoticed. <laughs>